how did you start being a, a photographer? Wow, being a photographer. Mm -hmm. Golly, that goes back. Um, you know, I've always been an artist. Mm -hmm. I've been, uh, prior to being a photographer, you know, I've been a painter and a sculptor and a writer. And um, for me, it was a way to kind of bring things together. So I actually opened up a studio um, many years ago, many, many years ago. Um, this is back uh, when I was about 28 years old. Uh, I opened up a studio, which kind of led into doing other forms of art for my studio. I've never had a, had a sincere passion to be a photographer. I've always been passionate about being an artist mm -hmm. and photography, and especially in this digital age, although throughout the entire history of photography, what a great medium to bring all your art together. So uh, art is part of my journey. I mean, pardon me, the, the photography is part of my journey. How do you uh, decide what to do? Well, I don't know. It's never a one eureka moment. It's odd. It's, um, it evolves, and that's truly the way I, I live my life in art, is that you're, you, as you, you create something, it continues to develop. And if you open up your, your heart to it, then you slowly let it lead the way. How did the Santa thing come up? You're, you're famous for your beautiful Santa uh, Yeah, I, well, thank you. And I, I love yeah. doing the, the Santa work. Um, I, I really wanted to do something that was uh, storytelling. Two of my favorite artists in mm -hmm. the world uh, that have inspired me, uh, one was Norman Rockwell mm -hmm. and the other was Rembrandt. And I, I wanted to kind of mix those two together in with me. Yeah, I think you did a really good job of doing it. Well, it's exciting yeah. because mm -hmm. I love telling a story. And the, the, the trick is that each individual image tells a, a specific story to the viewer so that when the viewer looks at the image, it captures their gaze. And then they have to search the image and read it. And then as you do your photography and as you do the session, you're creating a sequence of images that tell a, gra a greater story. And that allows me then to bring in my writing skills afterwards and turn them into children's storybooks for my clients. And that's a really good selling point, right? Instead of just selling one portrait. It's very, very different. Um, you know, the, the, there's, there's two sides to me. There, there's the, the creative person, and then there's the analytical, um, logical me. That side of me loves to sell. That side of me loves the... You use the word love. You love to sell. Usually photographers like... I hate selling. No, like I, I, I love to sell. You love to sell. Yes, I love to create. It's really good. Right? Yeah. I don't care to duplicate, but I love to create. Mm -hmm. And then I create something that's extraordinary. And although that's not the point. The point isn't that it's extraordinary. The point is that you are creating. Because not everything that you create is extraordinary. Right. Matter of fact, I think you learn the most when you create something and it's, you look at it and you go, ah, I don't, you know, that, didn't, <laughs> that didn't come out the way I want. <laughs> I know. But that's where the mm -hmm. learning is, mm -hmm. right? So, but once you do create something that's extraordinary and you also have the logistical knowledge in your pocket to recreate it, now you become the artist and mm -hmm. you've got, that's part of your style. It's the evolution of style. And now I can leave that sitting in my computer. I can leave it on a hard drive. I can put, print it and put it in a closet. But what good is that? But if I sell it, if I sell it to people, it ends up in people's homes. People see it. They can not only enjoy it, but then also then they can become repeat buyers and mm -hmm. I get word of mouth clients. Usually that's how you go, right? You have word of mouth. You don't had hardly advertise anything. Well, I do, I do advertise uh, through social media. I think it's very, very important to do that. I also advertise in our local community. Okay. If there's an event, I'm at it. If there's a charity, I'm at it. If I'm mm -hmm. board of directors with different charities, I'm on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be part of my community. Um, so I think that's an, an important aspect to the whole marketing side, but that's different than say, selling. Right. It's very different. I always say marketing gets people in your door mm -hmm. and sales gets people to spend money with you. They're two very different things. They're, they work together. So I already know the products that I'm going to offer to my clients. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that happens in the pre-consultation, which here we are back to the selling component selling. again. Pre-consultation is sales, session is creation, sales and viewing session afterwards is back to selling again. Sounds like you have a system. It, absolutely. So, I mean, that's part of the key is really if you're going to have a studio in today's world, it needs to be systemized. You have to know what you're doing. Everything has to have a purpose and a meaning. Um, Speaking of which, hmm. you do mainly children photography. You do some family, some pets, some other stuff, mm -hmm, commercial stuff, I but do. mainly mm -hmm. this studio is mainly geared towards 
beautiful children portrait. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. Is that a sustainable business model? Like, would you would you recommend to somebody just thinking, oh, I want to do a portrait studio? Is that a good thing? I think it is. It is. Um, I mean, I, I think that any kind of photography is sustainable if it's done correctly. What about, oh, photography is dead. Every soccer mom now has a camera. Every, you know, five-year-old has a camera and a smartphone. Sure, they do, and that's fine. But <laughs> they're not buying my photographs. They're buying my art. Uh -huh. and, and I sell it that way, I market it that way, mm -hmm. and I produce it that way. Photography has changed so much, and you've mm. been around to see it mm -hmm, go have. from one end to an extreme. Yes, I have. Yeah, how does that, what do you, what's your take on it? Mm. Um, I love the where, where photography is going. Mm -hmm. I think the digital is only getting better and better and better. The softwares that are available to do uh, digital uh, and, and artistic manipulation. Did you embrace digital right Absolutely. away? Absolutely. You did. From the start. I, th I thought mm -hmm. it was incredible. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And, and I will continue to. Um, you know, to me, it allows me to be even a better artist. And I think we're only in the infancy of it. I think it's going to get better and better and better. And this whole thing about, you know, we don't need professional photographers anymore and they're going to be an extinct, it's not. It's not the case. It may be photography as we knew it, yes. I mean, if you've, if you've done one thing for the last 20 years and mm -hmm. it's worked well for you in those 20 years and you're still trying to do those same things and read, read, and that's what's hard. It's hard for a lot of studio owners that have been successful for 20, 25 years and done, done very, very well. And then all of a sudden they're not busy anymore. And they're saying, you know, listen, I've, I've, been do I've done well. So do you, how, you're telling me I've got to change? Excuse me? Okay, yeah. It's a tough thing. But those people, in fact, do have to change. Because we're on a, the whole industry is on a ride right now, on a, going in a completely different direction. And I think that, that photographers truly need to embrace what's coming up. What direction is it going? In? Well, it's, it's, it definitely is going in, in a digital direction. But I think it's going to be more and more artistic because the um, all of whether it's software or cameras, mm -hmm. they are getting smarter and smarter and smarter. Okay, so if if your clientele out there can buy a camera, take a picture, press a button, it does an auto exposure correct, it does this correct, it does that correct, and it gives, even there, it can even crop it correctly. It sounds like oh my god, why do I want to get in that industry? Okay, to me, I just have to be better than that. So it forces me, uh, and, and I love that, it forces me to be an artist. It forces me to think. And so that that person that does that and presses those buttons and gets that and goes, that's pretty darn good. And they go, but it's not like that. Right. Oh my God, wow. how does he do that? Mm -hmm. And you know what, the other thing is, how good are we at communication with our subjects? Mm -hmm. Because people constantly say, you know, where do you get all these kids with these amazing expressions? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, look through all my work on, on Facebook or my website. They're all like that. Did I get lucky and just get all great kids that had wonderful expressions? No. Mm -hmm. Or adults that gave me you know, angelic looks? No. It's in how you communicate with them. That's your job. And that you can learn. You can um, Absolutely, take classes, you can, you can apprentice. Yeah. You can. Mm -hmm. You can learn those things. Once you learn that communication, the skills of that communication, there's not a smart camera in the world mm -hmm. that will ever do that. There's no app to do mm -hmm. a, a Larry no. Hershberger no. photo? No? No, no so Santa that, app? So what that does is it, it allows you to stand out. And then, of course, there's many people that they don't want a smart camera. They don't want to do all that. All they want you to do is you want to service them. My clients want me to make a great product for them and service them with an incredible product. I, I write story, children's storybooks from my sessions set to poetry. Yeah. It's beautiful. There's not a beautiful camera and expensive camera in the world that can do that. So you need to think about your products. Think about your service. Mm -hmm. Think about your, your presentation. Think about your, the, I mean, we haven't even talked about the image. Yeah. Right? So all these things you that we can do. You do framing in-house as of well. Of course we right? do framing yeah. as well. It's a full service well, matter of fact, we do some work when people just bring in a painting and say, I want it framed, sure. Mm -hmm. It's a product. Yeah. That's the lo there's the logical Service. side of me coming out mm -hmm. again. It's a product. Frames are a product. If everything I do is priced with a frame, I just sold more products. Right? This is part of the system in my business model. How many people copy your work? So, well, I think a lot of people try, and, and a lot of people, um, I think it's a, it's, it is a compliment. Um, and at the same time, it disappoints me.
-hmm. And it doesn't disappoint me because they're copying me. It disappoints me because they haven't learned to open their own creative door up and mm -hmm. do their own creation and their own thing because mm -hmm. that's where the that's where the fun is. It's certainly where where the I think you do better selling your own work that's your own ideas and your own thought. Right. Um, I love being a, if I can inspire anyone to do something of their own. I I I feel that there's where I feel a great sense of accomplishment uh, accomplishment as well. You know, you don't come into my studio and see everything. Nothing looks the same. You see all kinds of different things in the gallery. Um, and, and each session, I talk to the parents and I really say, what are we going to create? Well, I end up creating many different types of things, not mm -hmm. just my, my elegant Santa work. Right. Oh, I know. You know, I, I mean, I do all kinds of other things that are really pushing the boundary of, of portraiture. And, and not for the sake of pushing the boundary, for the sake of creation, for something different. Right. right. So basically, from what I'm taking from what you just said, is the advice would be to differentiate yourself from your local market. Certainly. Create something, come up with an angle, create something new. Well, I think they need to create something new, but no, that's not the only thing. I, I think that if, if somebody creates a good product, a really professional product, mm -hmm. and they make a very professional, systemized studio that is very good at, at customer service, they market to their clients well, they create a great product for them. Um, mm. They do the follow-up well afterwards. The product itself is very professional. There will be a collection of people that they'll build as clientele over time, mm -hmm. and they just have to take care of them very well. Um, and, and they'll do well at it. Mm -hmm. You can also do different uh, business models, different di business systems. One may be geared towards high end mm -hmm. and low volume. Another could be geared towards um, very high volume and not a very high price. It depends on what market you're in, right? Correct. Yeah. You have to yeah. make your business your business plan. You've got to fit your job costs in. You've got to make sure that your pricing is accurate. I mean, my business model, I, I only r literally want to see 92 sessions a year. I don't want to see more than that. I like to mm -hmm. see, on average, a couple of sessions a week. You know, and I don't want more than that. Right. right? Yeah. Whereas you tell that to a high end, or, I mean, a volume studio, and they'd mm -hmm. be like, "What? Yeah. Right? Okay." But they need that volume, and it fits into their system. And that's okay. It's okay. If that's what they do. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. It's okay. And I'm sure they would spend less time, maybe, Absolutely. on each session, and they less would never work have... would go into it. Right. Yeah. But it would still mm -hmm. be a quality product, and sure. that studio could still make a good living too. Mm -hmm. So my way isn't the be all and end all. To uh, if you do this way, you're going to be successful. You need to do it the way that you want, that is you. But you need to, once you make your decision, make your business plan around it and then stick to that. I'm looking at this huge, beautiful studio with all those beautiful portraits on the walls and your reputations and you're lecturing and you're doing this and that and we'll get into other stuff that you're doing mm -hmm. um, later that's recently and exciting. But you, it wasn't always like that. No, no. Right? I, I mean, I've had my ups and downs in my life. And, you know, for 17 years, I had a, a very, very successful company. Mm -hmm. And just through a, a sequence of events that all happened at the same time, it's kind of like the perfect storm, mm -hmm. I lost my company. Now, at that time, I tell you what, uh, I literally became um, homeless. Yeah, you told I, you were bankrupt I, and homeless. I was zeroed out. Yeah. Right? Absolutely zeroed out. And you know what? It, I never want to go through that again. It was very, very hard. It was mm -hmm. very difficult. Um, Did you think you'd ever come out of it? Did yes. you want to like give everything up? Or? No, I never, I never felt that. Um, mm -hmm. There was a time that I, I had to take really tiny baby steps. And I know that people, there's people out there that, that uh, have struggled, mm -hmm. especially in this economy. But it's, baby steps are very important because they still go in a direction. Right, yeah. and eventually they get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. Um, you have to let yourself be humbled. You do. Let yourself be humbled, um, and it's okay to say to other people that you're humbled. It's okay to mm -hmm. feel it and know that's part of your learning. Did you ask for help? At any Absolutely. Point? Yeah. yeah, and you have to be willing to to accept help. You know, there's was friends and family that that really stepped up, but also you have to realize that you know when that happens, it, it, in a way it purges too because a lot of people disappear. I can bet. Yeah, yeah, That's they disappear true. You very You find quickly. out who your real friends are. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. But you know, at the, and also then I think at some point you realize that some of the people that disappeared, um, you know, they're just caught between a rock and a hard place, and they may not be in a position. You know, so you, yeah, you yeah. cannot, you can't judge anyone. I know. 
you just can't. That's you true. What you have to do is focus on what is your future and, and your road back to success. Mm -hmm. And that starts with following your passion. It starts with baby step. Um, it starts with pure belief, mm -hmm. undying belief, and a business plan. A business plan is very important. It is. Yeah. It starts with a business plan. It starts with, with, you know, keep going in steps that are your passion. Because as you go in your passion, always, that is your journey. Other people have a similar journey. They will connect. They'll see, and you know, this and this and this. And all of a sudden, it starts to grow. Right. And you feel like, wow, I'm not doing baby steps anymore. What's the one thing, if you had one thing, advice, like crucial, important advice that you could give somebody that's just, you know, out on their luck and sure. they're kind of thinking about quitting? They want it, they love it, but they're like, it's not going to happen. I need to get a real job. Yeah, I think that you have to never give up and I think you have to really truly believe although if you don't know how to make a system and how to make a plan you need to get with someone that does know how to mm -hmm. that can help you put the building blocks in so place find a mentor correct uh -huh. you have to because once that mentor gets your building blocks in place really it's like riding a bike right Do you have one it, it's well, sure 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 like you take for example people like uh, from an artistic standpoint people mm -hmm. like um, Louise and Joseph Simone and, and, yeah. and Lisa Jane Murphy uh, mm -hmm. that I just admire so much as artists. Um, people like Jeff Lubin. Um, mm -hmm. Jeff Lubin is, is there's not going to find a better business person in the photographic industry. Okay. Um, and people like that are, are out there and available to, to, um, to talk to. Um, you may want, you may go just go to your, your accountant and say, you know, I really want to get going, but I want more knowledge. Mm -hmm. There's so many good, um, golly, there's so many good people in, in the industry that, that can get you going. Um, but it starts with asking. It does. It starts with somebody saying, you know, pe people contact me all the time on Facebook, and I love that. You know, send me a message on Facebook and say, where would I start? Yeah. You know, that's the thing with people that are famous or they're well-known. You think that they're maybe they're not approachable, and they're like, ah, who the hell is Joe that I'm going to pick up the phone and talk mm. to him? or answer an email, you know, how sure. many emails I get. So it, it kind of puts people off on doing it. So you're yeah. saying do it anyway? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Just go ahead I mean, and do listen, it. I mean, listen, I know what it's like to, uh, to not know how I'm going to pay for my next meal. I know what it's like wondering, uh, oh, my goodness, I, I've got a little bit of money to get groceries, but I have no way of getting there. You know, I mean, I've been there, and I know what it's like when someone puts their hand out and says, oh, let me help you. You know, they're not giving you a handout. They're mm -hmm. putting their hand out. Yeah. It's different. And that's a difference. There's a big difference. Yeah. And it's just kindness. And, and uh, so, you know, I, I do try to uh, help people, you know, kind of get their, their themselves going again. Um, when you, when you um, are, are, like I have, I have a little granddaughter right now, and when, you, when you're teaching a, uh, her, I'm teaching her how to ride a bike, okay? So there's training wheels. Right. Okay. So I put her on there and, you know, she, at, at, when she was really little, it was like, well, even with the training wheels, she'd go into the ditch. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. you help her out and you steer a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right. But she's still the one driving. Right. Now, when the training wheels come off, it changes. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden you're holding and you're, you know, you're letting her go. But as soon as you let her go and she's going on her own, you, are you pedaling anymore? No. She's pedaling. She's pedaling. Same thing goes with this. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I, you could help out, but anyone that wants to make it on their own has to realize eventually they have to pedal on their own. Yeah, and it feels good to pedal on your own. Well, it so does. It's, it it's feels a, wonderful. Then, then all of a sudden, it's freedom again, yeah. and and you, your your you know your mojo comes back, um, and you realize that I'll tell you something: never let one one single thing in your life define you. If if even if it's a major thing that really depresses you, really really hits you hard, knocks you down on your knees. You know, you think, "Ma, that's my major uh, catastrophic event," mm -hmm. and and if you let depression or anxiety def take over you, it defines who you are, and you're living a whole life. How could that one event define a whole life? So you have to put that in perspective. That even the things that are happening, when they're tough things, that's where your good lessons are, and you've got to live through it. It's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. It's going uh, things are going to hurt, but you get through it. And you come out the other side better, stronger. You do. Yeah. Do. It's actually yeah. your best lesson. What doesn't life. kill you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. What touches you when you mm. actually work? Well, I'm obviously the person that I'm photographing. 
do you do you recall any specific sessions that were extra yeah touching? you know the, 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 I think the, probably the one that, that has touched me more than anything in my entire life I photographed three sisters um, that were 98 years old 101 years old and 96 years old and they're three local sisters and and uh, uh, they're they were incredible I think the, the session took probably three hours you know they they came in they moved slow they um, they were lovely human beings. Um, they, they actually uh, had canceled the session because the, the youngest of the three, 96 young, uh -huh. um, had um, gone into hospice. Mm -hmm. And so they canceled the session and I felt very, very bad about that. Um, but later on that week they called me back and they said, can you still do that session tomorrow? I said, yeah, what changed? She called her doctor and said, I don't care what it takes, you get me to that photo session. So they, and they came. And I'm telling you, it was very godly. It was, it was an incredible moment. Um, I, I mean, how do you, there's no, there's no handbook on how to pose three century old women, you know. Um, and, I, and I prayed about that. That morning I was like, well, golly, how am I going to get this done? I didn't even know exactly what I'm going to do. Although I did do a, a consultation and we did talk clothing what we want to do mm -hmm. and they're very very happy people they said we're very bright people mm -hmm. you know everything about us is bright so I said let's go very light and pastel -y. and I've got a really floral background I want to use in with you and they were like oh that sounds lovely it'll be like going to church great <laughs> great so so once we had them in I, I it's like a, it's like something else took over or someone else took over because it seemed to flow effortlessly and I and they kept ribbing each other and laughing and laughing. They were constantly laughing. And I'm thinking, there's these three century old women that mm -hmm. are just laughing and having so much fun. So I asked them, I said, all right, you guys, what's the deal? Tell me what's the deal. Why, are you guys always like this? And the eldest, she grabbed me by the hands and she looked me in the eye and she said, Larry, in a sweet little southern voice, she said, Larry, to live a joyous life is a choice. And I'll never forget that moment because it is a choice. It's a choice to be joyful, you know, and, and the session unfolded. We did this beautiful, beautiful work. The, the youngest, who was from hospice, um, she was in her wheelchair. And I had her sitting most of the time, but then I said, at the end, I walked up to her and I got my knees and I said, Frankie, Francis, Fr mm -hmm. Fra Frankie, will you stand for this portrait? And her daughter, who was behind, said, no, no, uh, Frankie should sit. She should sit in the chair there. Because I had the eldest sitting in the chair, mm -hmm. just respect for elders. And uh, Frankie says, I will stand for this portrait. <laughs> so uh, it was my opportunity to have her stand, and I had her pose properly. I, I wanted her with her, I, and she had to feel safe with her hands on the back of the, her sister and her body up against the chair, and had her turn back to the light. And, and this gave this beautiful S curve to her body. Mm -hmm. And she looked so radiant in this image. So beautiful. And everybody was like, oh, in the room. She sent a really nice message with her, her daughter later after she was back in hospice. She died two weeks later. And uh, I always get choked up about this, but she sent this message back and her daughter said, tell Mr. Hirschberger, she said, I believe that the, the studio session was one of the most memorable times of my life. Wow. Wow. That is a wow. So, I mean, how does it get any better than that? You're now going to be licensed. Mm -hmm. You're licensing out your work. Yeah. Well, actually not going to be. I am. You are? Yeah. I've got, a, uh, I've got an agent that mm -hmm. represents me internationally. Mm -hmm. um, and that has been a fascinating part of my so business. So what is that exactly? What, what is it going to entail? Well, you know, I've, I've got a, uh, a line of my, of my Santa work, you know, my fairies, my, my um, oh, I've got commercial uh, scenic work, uh, just in a, quite, a, quite a large variety. But recently I've done a few good licenses. Mm -hmm. with um, manufacturers that will, doing, uh, will be creating a full product line with my Christmas artwork. Such as, an example? Like our, uh, the products would be, you know, uh, Christmas plates, platters, uh, mailbox covers, uh, Christmas ornaments, um, goodness it goes on and on, uh, door canvases, uh, garden flags, like it'll be a full product line of about 50 products and, uh, and that will only grow over time. 
but going into tens of thousands of stores How next year. How does that feel to go into a store, a department store or whatever is going to be featured oh, wonderful. and see your work? You know, I don't think I feel a deep sense of pride. I feel a deep sense of accomplishment. Okay. And I think those are different things. And, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm ha it makes me very happy. You know, um, I think a deep sense of accomplishment is the best way of, of looking at it because I've worked hard at it. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like there was an agent walking down the street and happened to see a picture of mine and go, hey, can I sign you up? You know, that's not the way it worked. I mean, it it's was a really lot It's really hard of, to get into that. To get an agent, mm -hmm. very few people get an agent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I traveled quite a road to, uh, to get to having an agent. You know, if, if you were to go back four years ago, and, and I was to tell you that, you know, I'm going to be licensed with an international agent and my work's going to be in stores all over the world. You know, I wouldn't say that was part of my plan four years ago. Right, that kind of happened. Well, because I'm on my journey, there's a lot of things that fit within that path that I go on. And it's not really plateau driven, it's journey driven. And because it's exactly where you're happy and where you're comfortable, you know, things, paths are going to, other stuff's going to come in, other opportunities, and opportunities that you like, that make you feel good, like the licensing. That's actually a nice way to, to get people, photographers, to understand that there's far more ways to sell their artwork. Than just the print to the client Correct. at that point. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. we need to think larger in the future. We need to think to a broader our audience. Always, you know, live to create. You know, not just to duplicate, you know, not just to chase the, the, the buck, although that's very important. Right. Never be afraid to make money with your, with your artwork. Yeah, that's important. That's an important lesson that a lot of creative people need to learn. Correct, correct. Yeah. Um, I, I did, but I also just think that, that you know, you, you do need to, if you're going to succeed in the future, you need mm -hmm. to be you. You know, let your self-esteem rise, mm -hmm. right? Rise up and be yourself. You know, you have that creativity within you. I've had people come into my workshop that, that say, well, I want to learn how you do what you do because I am not an artist. I'm a photographer. I, I'm good at the camera. I mm -hmm. understand what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but, I, but I want, I, I'm not an artist. And then I talk to them in, in, after the workshop and we work for a while afterwards and a you know, year down the road and they're making incredible work and they're going, oh my God, I never knew this was in me. It is, but you have to unlock it. You know, we, we as adults rationalize it and lock it all up. So Larry, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, what would be the best way to do that? You know, the best way um, is through Facebook, really. Go mm -hmm. onto my Kissing Tree Studio page on Facebook, uh, mm -hmm. like the page, um, friend me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always message me on Facebook um, just because I do a lot of marketing there. Or you can email me at Larry at KissingTreeStudio.com. Mm -hmm. That's another option. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way. It's always the easiest way.